Today we're going to talk about the extreme lower. We're going to take it apart and put it back together and pointing out uh, certain things as we go along. First of all, always read the manual uh, for full instructions. And when we're working on a pump here, it is a fairly new pump. Uh, be sure to flush yours out and get it ready for disassembly. We're going to start with the foot valve down here. In a lot of cases, what's nice about this, we do have these big ears where you can just hit the hammer on there, but this one's already been kind of loosened up for me. When we take it off, we're going to look underneath here, we're going to see a ball cage, and right beneath that ball cage we have the ball. There might be some shims on top or the bottom, I'll show those to you here in a moment. Taking this out, sometimes you may just have to have a good whack on the top of the table, or if you have a piece of wood or something that can get on down there that is not metal, can also help push that out. And when it's pushed out, all we have left is our housing. We'll set that aside. Then we have our, our uh, inlet seal. It's a carbide seal. Um, one thing to note, this is reversible, so if this side does get damaged, we can flip that over when we rebuild it and use the other side. One of the seals that seals it up, and here are those shims. So what the shims do for us, it allows for different ball travel. So if all three shims are on top, we're going to have the shortest ball travel typically used for low viscosity materials. When we put all three shims at the bottom, what that does now it allows for a longer ball travel. We want to use that when the viscosities of the material are fairly large. The heavier the material, the more ball travel we need. Therefore, we're going to have less cavitation. All right, we're going to set these aside, and we'll get back to them when we rebuild it. Next, what I like to do is loosen our throat packing just a little bit, and we're going to use the throat packing to help verify that the rod, when we push that through, stays right in the center so we don't damage that cylinder. Again, you could use a hammer. This one's a bit loose already. We'll just push that on down and out. And out comes our rod. So here we have our rod. One thing to note, up top here we have one uh, ring around it. That denotes that it's a standard Chromex rod. If we had two rings around it, that would denote that it is a uh, Max Life rod. So one ring, Chromex, two rings, Max Life. Down at the bottom here, we have our packings. So we're going to take those off. Again, this is just loosened for our, uh, for our needs today here. So we take that off. Look at our ball. So before we put the shaft down, just verify there's no scratches in the shaft. Uh, it looks good. Any scratches that you can hit with your fingernail uh, would be a good time to replace that rod. Um, look at your ball. Now, when you get your rebuild kit, the ball's already inside of it, so you can either reuse the ball. I suggest just replacing it with the rest of the kit so there's not going to be any uh, future issues. And we have our packings. We'll get to those in a moment, but right now, here we have our seat. Again, it's a carbide seat like we saw before on the inlet seat. Um, again, look at it, verify there's no scratches on it, verify it looks in good condition. So these packings are new. So this is still our five stack packing. Um, we no longer are talking about extreme seal. Um, this one's the uh, UHM, WPE, and leather ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. And then the glands themselves are now black to help denote uh, which version of the packing you have. All right. Now, when you're using leather, if you look in the manual, it does say for best results to soak them in oil. Um, typically, I use a TSL and just let them soak in there for a bit. We're just trying to you know, kind of pre-lubricate them. All right, so when we're done with that, we're going to come back over here, and we have our piston. So when we're putting these packings back on, we need to make sure that these two lips are facing up or facing towards the pressure. When they face towards the pressure, then they'll expand out and seal. 
So you can either do them one by one or do the whole stack at a time. Just to make sure they're alternating for best results. Then we'll put that ball back on. And now we got the rod put back together. And then when you torque it down, look in your manual for the proper torque. We're going to set that aside and disassemble the rest of the pump here. So now that we got the piston out, now we can kind of focus our attention to the throat packing. Some of these threads are quite long, so it takes a couple rotations before they come out. And then we can, just like before, on the inlet side, if you just put it upside down, you can get in there and kind of push it out. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. There we go. And then that's just our housing. And then we have the throat packing. One of the things you're going to note when you have these black glands like this, there's a groove on the bottom of the packing where we have this wave spring. And that wave spring is there to help with preloading of the packings when it's not under pressure. And just like before, we have the UHM WPE and the leather. So we put a new stack together. We can soak those leathers in oil before putting them back together. All right, we're going to set that aside. Now we're going to come back here. We're going to take off the cylinder. We use this pin to help keep that cylinder in place. Now one thing you're going to note is when you undo these, it's fairly difficult at first because we have a fairly large O-ring on the top of the cylinder. And unfortunately this thread is quite fine so it does take quite a bit of turning before it comes loose. So as we're taking this off, as that cylinder spins around, you're going to notice we do laser etch the size of the pump in that cylinder. So that way you know what size you have. In this particular case, it's a 180cc lower. There we go. Set that aside. Then if your lower is equipped with an integrated filter housing, We'll take apart the filter housing. Typically, I start off with the front and the top one, I should say. There we go. We take our filter out, and we have the support behind the filter. So as we're filtering products, if it does collapse, it doesn't totally collapse, and there's a support there. And on the bottom is just the bottom one. And there we go. There the pump is torn apart. Now if you want to, you can always take this center plug off and that's the pathway from the lower itself into the filter housing for better cleaning. Um, otherwise, at this point, you're, you're cleaning things up and now we're going to put it back together. So you can start one of two ways. I, I'll do the way that I normally do. We'll start with the filter housing. Uh, we'll put our new uh, PTFE O-rings around here. Um, one thing to note, that um, typically when you get to the top cover for the filter housing, that's the one that gets used quite a bit. People are in and out of this one, so you notice that how thick that O-ring is. So that way, because it's PTFE, it doesn't have a lot of memory. So with the larger O-ring, you'll be able to reuse that several more times than what the older version was. So as I'm putting things back together, depending on the material that you're using um, to pump with, normally I'll put some type of anti-seize on those threads. That way, um, when we do have to go back and take it apart, it's going to be a lot easier, especially for when you uh, extend the pot life of the material that you're spraying and trying to rebuild that lower. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the throat packings. So there's one or two ways to do it. Typically what I like to do is put this together as a cartridge, then put it into the housing. So this is a little bit easier nowadays. So what you can do is you can see we have our wave spring. 
right? And that's going to go into the male gland. There again, those lips are going to be facing down because they're going to face towards the pressure. And just like before, we're going to alternate the two. And I'll place it upside down, put the housing on top, a little bit easier to get it in there. Use your fingers to push up. I like to hold it so that way that top gland doesn't pop out. And all I'm going to do is just kind of hand tight just to get them together, loosen it up a bit, and then we can install it into the top portion of our housing. Oh, one thing to note, there's another O-ring here. Again, it's PTFE. Be sure to replace that. And if you'd like, you can put a little bit of anti-seize on that thread. So again, when you torque that, just top the uh, the bottom housing there, you know, look in the manual again for the proper torque setting so it's in there proper. All right, now we're going to bring this back around and we're going to put in the, the barrel. So O-ring up top, O-ring up down below. Look inside the cylinder, verify there's no scratches in there that can be, you know, that you can hit with your fingernail. Again, a little anti-seize on those threads so it makes it easier pulling it apart. Now when you put a brand new O-ring on the top of the cylinder here, you're going to get to a point where it kind of gets really resistant to the screwing. You just need to work past that. All that's doing is getting into its sealing groove for when it's under pressure it'll seal. As you can see, we got it there. After we bottom that cylinder out, we need to back it off a bit so we can put that pin back through the hole. So what you're going to do, it's going to go in part way. You just kind of have to move it around until it fully gets in there. And I like to take it and just give it a turn backwards, kind of lock it into place. From here, what we can do is we can take our rod and bring it up through the bottom through our throat seals. Why I do that? It kind of helps guide it through and keeps it right in the center. Give it a little push, bring it up a little bit so the rod is exposed. That's good. Again, a little bit of anti-seize on there so we can take it off. Now here comes the fun part is reassembly of the inlet. So we first start off with our inlet seal, and then we have our O-ring. So that O-ring is going to seal that seal up against the housing. Okay. Now, we need to make sure we put our ball in there. Without the ball, we're not going to pump. Replace our two seals, and then we got to decide where should we put our shims. So. We'll just start off with uh, two at the bottom, one at the top. Now when we put this back in, be careful so it goes straight down so you don't, otherwise if it doesn't go straight down you may shear the O-rings on that housing. Usually just your thumbs are enough to push it all the way down and make sure that whatever shims you don't put at the bottom you need to put at the top. That way it, it keeps that thickness of the shims and the housing consistent so when we put this back onto the barrel everything lines up properly. Now what, what can happen sometimes is when you go put it back on that shim pops out so some white lithium grease onto that shim should be able to hold it or sometimes you just get lucky if you're nice and slow. Voila. And you take the hammer, hit it a couple of times to lock it in. Now we rebuilt the pump. Again, refer to the manual for the proper torque settings and additional information. Thank you.